On today's show, more MacBook Air 2022 information from Guoming Chi. I'm Mike Cave David and I simplify Apple so that everything just works for you. And if you want the latest Apple news, leaks and rumours every weekday at 12 UTC, like the video, subscribe to this channel and ring my notification bell. Straight into the news today, Apple analyst Guo Mingqi has today released a new note to investors mentioning some new and clarified details on Apple's 2022 MacBook Air. The headline being that the new MacBook Air model will carry a 13.3 inch mini LED display compared to the current version which uses a traditional LCD backlight. The mini LED display, like the Retina XDR display in the current 12.9 inch iPad Pro, will have multiple dimming zones giving better contrast ratios and the ability to display HDR video. This will be releasing soon after the 14 inch and 16 inch MacBook Pros with M1X that will use the same display technology later this year. Now, while the M1X in those MacBook Pros is expected to be approximately twice as fast as the current M1 performance, thanks to twice the performance cores inside, the M2 in the MacBook Air will be more subtle increase with the same four performance core count as the M1, but using the faster cores from the A15 generation, giving an expected 20% performance increase while focusing on efficiency and battery life. Guo doesn't mention a redesign here specifically, although the nature of integrating the mini LED displays does suggest that this will be required. As in the iPad Pro M1, the design was made slightly thicker to accommodate that display. It wouldn't make a great deal of sense for Apple not to take advantage of this to refresh the design overall, and it seems most likely that the new design language would be coming with this update. Of course, our renders are as always provided by the artist briefly known as Orchard Digital, Apple Tomorrow. The 2022 MacBook Air is expected to finally ditch that wedge shape, instead going for an even more slimmed down MacBook Pro style design defined by the thickness of the USB-C ports. It's unclear at this point whether there will be just two Thunderbolt USB ports or if a MagSafe connector will be included too, but the addition of the coloured aluminium chassis and white display bezels are expected to complement the existing 24 inch iMac design in the consumer end of Apple's Mac lineup, with the pros expected to keep the black display surrounds. And these XDR displays that are being put in, they're expected to have the same brightness as the iPad Pro, and also the Pro Display XDR peaking out at 1600 nits, which is like wear your sunglasses while you're using it kind of bright. So there's not a huge amount of new information here, but it is nice to have a little bit more information from a generally reliable source that lines up with what we've already heard. But what do you think? Is the MacBook Air with M2 enough for you, or do you need the brute force of the M1X MacBook Pro that should be coming later this year? Let me know down in the comments. And one other little note that was uh, kind of sneaked into this article, uh, this information is coming via Apple Insider, was that Guomingji also expects the mini LED displays to come to the redesigned iPad mini, which is very interesting although he didn't clarify whether that would be this year or in coming years. So that one's kind of still up in the air, but also a nice little tidbit. So let's get into your questions now. I cave answers time, starting off with Marcin Kowalczyk. And this is actually an I drink answers. Any great stuff that's non-alcoholic that you could recommend. So honestly, I've always moved. I've never found really great alcohol free cocktails. Um, there's stuff out there now like seed lip and a whole bunch of kind of alcohol free spirits to to be completely honest to me they're overpriced and they're not particularly great um people have just tried to put in complexity for its own sake rather than going for things that taste nice if you don't want to drink alcohol that's absolutely fine and i barely drink any alcohol anymore it tends to be just tastings for events or when i'm developing drink recipes however uh if you, if you don't want to drink alcohol, I don't recommend going for stuff that simulates the flavour of alcohol. It just doesn't make too much sense. Um, so I would go for just really good fresh juices, maybe with some, um, some infusions. One thing that you can do, though, is if you want to make a syrup with really interesting flavours, you can make a simple syrup just the same way that you would make um, a sugar syrup. So you just dissolve sugar into water, but add in some herbs filter them out afterwards, and you'll get some really nice flavours there. Back to Apple stuff. Travis Smith asks, IK answers, Apple should use the 5.8 inch screen size for the SE3. Now I'm trying to think the 5.8 inch display, I think that was the one that came with the iPhone 10, if I'm not mistaken, um, and the 10S. 
at that point you're you're still using OLED, which is more expensive. So using the 6.1 inch LCD display from the iPhone XR makes a lot more sense in terms of trying to make a budget item. Now, I think the issue is that the Face ID sensors are quite expensive, which is why there's been rumours in the past of putting Touch ID into the power button. That would be pretty cool, uh, but we will see what happens there. And also from Travis Smith, IK answers why does Apple use the name SE for their lower price products? So this all began with the iPhone 5 line. So there was the iPhone 5 came out, that was the first one with the slightly taller display size, um, four inches instead of three and a half inches, which Apple had had purely three and a half inch up until that point. The four inch display with that new design language where they'd thinned it out and they had the all aluminium chassis, but with glass inserts on the back. Uh, that came with the iPhone 5, then the 5S was revolutionary because that was the first time that there was a 64-bit ARM chip in any phone. Um, and the 5SE basically took that design and put iPhone, I believe it was the 6S internals into it, which basically brought it a lot more up to date, gave it a little bit more power, and uh, that that's a phone that still to this day you can actually have the same, uh, can have the current software, I believe. Um, even up to iOS 15, which is coming out this year, uh, that can still run with it. However, the name of the SE meant special edition, um, so it was kind of to keep that smaller form factor around for the people that really wanted to keep the small form factor. Now, it's done quite well because it's still been, uh, it was still for sale until the new SE arrived. And there are people that just want a lower priced item. Now the SE name goes right back to some of the early Macintoshes, um, but it wasn't a lower priced thing back then. Uh, I think it's just that it worked for this 5 SE and, uh, and so they've kept it around because people kind of got used to that name. Um, it's not really used in much outside of the iPhone, but uh, I'd, I'd like them to see that happen. Ryan Bellinger asks, IK Vances, do you think that the M1X MacBook Pro will have cellular options like the iPads? Now, I don't know if this is going to happen, but it is something that I predicted a little while ago, so I would hope they would, and the main reason that I think that Apple should do this is not specifically for the feature, but because then just like uh, some of the iPads that are sold by mobile carriers on a subscription plan in the same way that you would subscribe to a phone, uh, they could do the same with uh, MacBooks at that point, and that would just open up MacBooks to a huge number of additional people. Now, I know that you can buy an iPad or a MacBook on finance regardless, but I think a lot of people, because they've already got a kind of monthly plan going with a cell carrier, they're used to that, they're not put off by the idea of it, it doesn't feel like finance, and so that might be something that they're going to do in future. That would be the main reason I think they would put it in there because it's very simple on most cell plans to do a personal hotspot on your phone, connect it to your iPad or your MacBook. So I personally wouldn't buy a cellular one, but I can see why a lot of people would. And Evan Rogers asks, IK Vances, excluding the AR VR market, what market segment would you most like Apple to enter? In my opinion, a 12K Apple Pro camera would be awesome. So yeah, Apple's done um, some incredible stuff in the camera market. However, it, there's there's quite a big gap, I think, still between what we can do with an iPhone and what we can do with uh, a genuine, like, balls-to-the-wall dedicated camera. I think Apple could do some amazing stuff if they were to apply their computational photography stuff to a real camera. Um, but in terms of what market I would like them to get into... I don't know. I think the stuff they're doing with health is really interesting. Um, I could see when they were when they were talking about the healthcare clinics that they were looking at doing in the US, where all of your data from your watch and everything else would be kind of integrated into that care. That seems like a real change. I think the AR stuff is obviously very important, and it's going to be huge to them going forward with the uh, Apple Glass project and things like that. The one that I'm the most interested to see, but will probably impact my life the least, is Apple Car. So that's it for today's show. Thank you ever so much for watching, and we will see you in the next one. Don't forget, you can suggest stuff for our anniversary show on August 15th, um, down in the comments using hashtag IKversary. Thank you all for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.